welcome back to the Bowtie Movie Lounge. I'm your host, Jacob. And I'm your co-host, Gabe Coates. And today we are talking about our first Marvel movie. That's uh, an achievement right there. That is an achievement. So we are excited to talk about 2017 uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. So many only said far from home. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, in preparation of uh, the new Spider-Man No Way Home coming out, we thought we'd kind of catch up and go ahead and do the Spider-Man Homecoming, the one that started it all, um, the one that's kind of the start of a new kind of Marvel era. Um, it's kind of weird that we didn't start with Iron Man, but you know it's it's all good. I mean, Iron Man's in it, so yeah, it's, it's like it's got to be both. Exactly, so it's it's a good kind of middle ground. Um, but yeah, no, uh, this, this is a really successful Marvel movie. Um, I remember when it first came out, like, it was just, I don't know, it just, it was like, there was, it was that and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 coming out at the same time. And I don't know, it was just, I don't know if it's just the character, but this was the movie that I was just most excited to see. And I don't know, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, the film stars Tom Holland, Robert Downey Jr., Marissa Tomei, Zendaya, John Favreau, and Michael Keaton. And don't forget uh, Donald Glover. Oh yeah, Donald Glover. Yeah, he does. Donald he Glover is. In he is in there. Playing the Prowler. The Prowler. We'll get into that. Uh, with an estimated 175 million dollar budget and making 117 million on the opening weekend, and a worldwide gross so far of 8,800. Wait, let's see. <laughs> 880 million. This was a much needed hero movie in the MCU. Um, you know, we, I mean, we get a taste of Tom Holland, uh, you know, in Civil War, but this is like where he gets his own movie. Um, you know, and then we're going to talk about what we think about Tom Holland, of mm -hmm. course. Um, and, you know, kind of in, in comparison to uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, but we're going to get into all that good stuff. Um, but first off, what do you think of this movie? So for me, I personally really like this movie. Oh yeah, I think it's you know a, a really good Spider-Man movie and one of my favorite Marvel movies. Like they're all well, some of them are pretty good, but like this one, I always I always really enjoy because I've always been a big fan of Spider-Man and yeah. seeing him come back to the you know the big screen and finally be in the MCU with interacting with all the different superheroes and everything. I thought it was really fun. I was like, this this is amazing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think this movie is amazing, as an amazing Spider-Man. Nice, yeah, That's knee, knee slapper. I know, right? I'm so funny. Um, but yeah, no, this movie, I would say, pretty much solidified. Spider-Man is like my favorite superhero. Really? Yeah. I mean, at first I was a Captain America guy, and then I was like Iron Man. At one point I was Thor. But then, yeah, I don't know, Thor, yeah, I don't know, Thor. No hate to Thor fans. No hate to Thor fans. I, I do really like him after uh, Ragnarok. But, no, this one is where I was like, oh, no, like, I, I can really connect to Spider-Man, I feel like, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, um, first, before we really jump into it, why don't we break it down with a little synopsis? All right, synopsis coming at you. Ooh. After the events of Captain America Civil War, where Iron Man recruited Peter Parker, portrayed by Tom Holland, 15-year-old Peter Parker is brought back into his somewhat normal life as web-slinging, wall-climbing, and super-strength Spider-Man. Eager from the action with the Avengers, Peter wants Tony Stark to take him as his protege and to make him an Avenger, but he finds himself doing friendly neighborhood Spider-Man chores, and also being a normal teenager outside of that. While in the meantime, character Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture, is creating a specialized weapons using Chitari, tech from 2012's attack on new york um like in seen in the first adventures movie yeah um when the two cross pass spider-man realizes this is a bigger threat than anything he's experienced and a potential way for iron man to notice him and take him as as protege and make him an official avenger yeah um tony stark who has to save peter at some point says that in, says that this case that this case is to stop the vulture. This is yeah, old, old, old. Wait, wait. Mixing up my words here. You want me to take over? Yeah, you got it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tony Stark, who has to save Peter at some point, says that this case to stop the vulture is a little too much for Peter to handle. 
Going against Tony's demands, Peter goes as far as hacking his suit, which unlocks more gear and an AI companion known as Karen, much like uh, Jarvis and Iron Man's suit. Uh, in pursuit of the vulture and causing some havoc in Washington D.C. and engaging an entire and endangering an entire ferry and the lives of everyone on it, requiring Iron Man to intervene again and save everyone, making Tony put his foot down and to take the Spider-Man suit from Peter. As the vulture is wanting Spider-Man gone and Peter is getting ready for his high school homecoming, he discovers that his crush's father is none other than the vulture himself. Leaving his crush Liz and his homecoming dance to stop the vulture, he confronts Adrian Toomes and learns that his next heist is on Tony Stark's plane carrying special tech. He is then trapped to put he is then trapped but able to break free with his own strength as a valuable lesson, which we'll talk about later. He's able to bring down the vulture along with the whole Stark plane. Leading, leave, I know, leaving the two <laughs> in a showdown where the vulture's wing suit blows up and Peter saves his life. Adrian, to, Adrian is brought into prison and Tony invites Peter to the Avengers headquarters, saying that he knew Peter would pull through with his own strength and without Tony's resources. Tony then gives P Peter a new suit. Peter then turns it down, saying he will stick to being the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Man. This 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 Marvel movie is really packed with a lot of a lot of good morals to it, um, and really good coming of age. Um, I mean, like, so I watched this movie. Let's see, it came out in two thousand seventeen. I was actually fifteen whenever was it, it two thousand seventeen. Yeah, yeah, like it came out. I remember it. it uh, the trailer for this and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 came out at the same time. And, like, I was just excited for this because it was, like, a new character, someone new, someone that we kind of had a taste of. And we already really liked him from Civil War. But, I like, I, this was the one I was really excited for. Um, and, you know, he was 15, you know, he was 15. And I was 15 at the time. And I was like, man, this is, like, the best version of Spider-Man because... He actually, like, I feel like he's actually a teenager. Like, I'm, like, this is actually, like, a, a reflection of me as a superhero almost. You know, not not specifically me, but, like, yeah, this is actually a real-life teenager. And then, like, learning that Tom Holland was, like, 23. Yeah. He, is he 23 now, or was he, like, I want to say he was, like, 19 or 20 when they filmed this movie. I think he was 23. Hmm. Like, he, he wasn't a teenager. Yeah, definitely not a teenager. But he looks like one, so mm -hmm. it works. Which is awesome because, like, you know, he's able to carry the role for much longer and, like, still kind of look. You know, they can age him up a little bit, but they can't really de-age him without it looking too weird. But, no, this, I mean, I love this movie and I love this rendition. So, um, yeah, um, I mean, it starts off with 2012, the attack, the attack from the Chitauri, uh in New York. Um, but one thing I did catch last night is that it said eight years later. So this mm -hmm. apparently takes place in 2020, which is kind of strange. Yeah. That's what I was kind of confused when you said it came out in 2017. Cause I always thought it was like different, but you know, oh all right. Well. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Um, but no, this, uh, it really captured like a good coming of age, which is exactly what like the director, Tom Watts was doing. Um, doing the research, I found out that, uh, he actually got everyone to watch all of John Hughes's movies, which are John Hughes. He did Ferris Bueller's Day Off, oh, gotcha. Breakfast Club, just forgot, I forgot. Um, Sixteen Candles, which I actually have not seen. Um, but I love all the other movies. Um, but and like you know, so John Hughes is he's known for making amazing coming of age movies, mm -hmm. and he's just like capturing like a really genuine feeling like teenage experience in all of his movies. Well, they, I think they definitely got an accurate portrayal of that. Yeah. In this and they really did. And that's, that was part of it. Apparently. Uh, so like I was saying, the research, uh, apparently Tom Holland invited like the cast over part of their homework was to actually watch like all the John Hughes movies. Yeah. And you can see that in an homage, like whenever he's like running through the, uh, the yard and yeah, sees Ferris Bueller's, Bueller's playing like, in the background. Right, right, right. 
And like I actually saw an interview where he's like, yeah, no, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off is like the one that really hit home for me. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's a. I love. We it. should definitely talk about that one. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, we're definitely gonna be doing that one. Um, but yeah, no. Um, so and then of course, also Tom Holland went undercover in a high school in New York City. Um, I forget what it's called. Like actually, yeah. yeah. So he actually went undercover for like I think a few months, or um, let's see, like if I could pull it up because I know. Um, oh come on, yeah, Bronx High School of Science. Uh, you know he went he went undercover to kind of like, like okay, because so, like we said earlier, he was a little older, and so he was trying to go back to like okay, what are what are like you know, ninth graders or tenth graders like you know these days, and also like he's from he's he's english so you had to right. do like a you have to figure out what like the american lifestyle was for him right. and so he went undercover uh so that's a fun i think it was like jimmy kimmel interview where he's like he's telling it you know it says it on like re, you know when you re research it that's pretty cool i actually didn't know that yeah and it's pretty cool he's, he he does a funny little bit where he's like yeah like there was this really cute girl she was like right there and then at one point, she's like, what's your deal, man? And like, he does the uh, the accent switch, um, which, speaking, you know, we'll talk about this later, but he, he does a great accent, I think. Like, he, he, he actually does an amazing accent. I've seen, like, in some interviews where they'll just, like, ask him. I think it was, like, some interview in the UK. But they were, like, asking him about how quickly he can switch. And he was just talking. And then he just, like, swaps it. And I was like, whoa. That's cool. Oh, wow. And, like, that's. All, all he did was just make his R's hard. And it was like ours he hard? just started talking with hard R's, and it like hard it R's. just sounded exactly like an American accent. Huh? That's actually pretty Which cool. That was kind of funny because I that's noticed his R's were more R. I was like, oh, maybe that's how they're like taught to speak in American accent. Is just make hard. Yeah, R's. just change your R's. Yeah, there's just a few like, you know, little little. Uh, what do you? I don't know. I'm not even gonna try. Like, I'm English is not my first language. <laughs> you know, it, it, it is, but. Nah, I'm not. I'm not even good at English. Um, but yeah, no. Um, I lost where I was. Um, but yeah, no. Speaking of Tom Holland's accent, you know, it's just he really nailed it, and like you forget that like that he's actually English. Yeah. But also, that was the same thing with uh, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield is actually not oh, American. Right. I totally forgot. About yeah, that. <laughs> like he's actually not American either, right. which is crazy. I mean, um, they probably just have like really good like uh accent teachers or whatever those are called yeah they can afford like on it set, you know. they can afford it and i think they take classes on set if i'm not mistaken yeah whenever i was on set with the last show um they had taryn edgerton who had an on-set dialect coach that's what it's called dialect coach. dialect coach yeah so that was that was cool to learn i didn't even really realize that there was a such thing as a dialect coach you know mm -hmm. um but um but yeah no it was that was always cool. I'm wearing my Spider-Man socks, by the way. I forgot. Nice. Yeah, check them out. Yeah, that, I didn't even know you had Spider-Man socks. Yeah, that's, I, well, I got them. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So then, of course, you've you've got the uh, the bad guys. It was a very interesting choice. The Vulture it seemed like they just kind of pulled him out of the air. It's. I actually really like the fact that they did the Vulture. Yeah, they, for the movie because he's never gotten any showtime like vulture has no. never been used before it's uh, always been exactly. green goblin lizard electro dr octopus but they were like you know let's go with vulture i was like ah exactly doing, like doing something new which i really appreciated rather than creating their own green goblin or something like that but i wonder if like they planned that purposefully for no way home exactly if that idea was put in the air like way back when tom holland started right now that's kind of what i'm like starting to think you know because Marvel obviously is so great at like, you know, having a plan, mm -hmm. gonna, but like, they're just so great at like having a plan. And I feel like this was the plan the whole time was just to get like, you know, the, all the alternate universes eventually. They'll, like, I just, I don't know. I'm really curious about that. I feel like they probably did have a plan on that because like after all the Avengers were to get older or something like that. What are you supposed to do after that? Right. Like you can't keep using them again or like CG them or something like that. So Right. And then of course, you know, someone's gonna have to replace Iron Man. And so that's kinda how I feel like Peter Parker is. Especially like 
and you know in this one Tom Holland's version of Peter Parker's almost like a replacement you know he's like a prodigy you know for like the Iron Man character because you know obviously like Tony Stark was gonna kick the bucket eventually <laughs> um but yeah no and then I mean while we're here let's let's talk about Tony Stark's character in this and like how he's this is this movie almost gave him like an arc. It seems like almost every single movie that Tony Stark is in, he gets like some sort of like character arc where like um you know it's like something changes. This one like kind of like okay, look, here's him kind of learning how to be almost like a father. Yeah. And like actually you know as his role as like leader kind of as the Avengers, you know, he kind of cares about him as like as, is almost like it's children. You know, he has to take that responsibility, and that kind of, of course, ultimate like leads to his like his sacrifice, mm -hmm. which you know, which happened in Endgame, and so I feel like that kind of had a role in it and kind of it play did, because he was given off like the tough love sort of vibes, like where he takes the suit. Yeah, and, you know, it's kind of like he was like punishing his own kid for just like bad behavior. Right, like I'm taking that away because you clearly can't handle it. Right. I I love that line. It's like if you're yeah, nothing yeah, without I the kinda, suit, if you're nothing without the suit, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have, have it at all. It's like, oh. That was a very dad thing to say. Oh like, yeah. Whenever he was kind of like you know, like which is exactly my point that you know he he, he did such a great job like with playing a father figure for the, yeah, uh, like and, and like I was looking out for it whenever we watched it last night, where uh, in the very beginning he's definitely not. he's he's a prick like in the very very beginning. I was like, man, dude, that is, actually, I was wrong. That's why, but like, then it plays up, out. Like whenever he first saves Spider-Man, mm -hmm. and he doesn't show up in the, in the suit, and he's just like mad and kind of scolding him from like across the country or wherever. <laughs> exactly. Like and then he shows up the second time, and he's like, all right, this, this is bad. That's a good point. Yeah. I didn't, even, like, like, didn't, I didn't even realize that. Like he didn't care enough to even show up. But right. then he, he was like, I'm going to show up now, because now this is like, it matters, because he's getting, clearly getting in too much, like, he can't. He can't handle Peter everything. can't handle it. He's clearly, like, being immature and not taking it seriously enough or something. And so he's like, I'm going to show up for this. He's just a little fresh. Yeah, that makes sense. But no, no. He, that, that was cool, you know, because, like, you, know, you have Civil War. And you have this one where it's, like, you have different Avengers who are not in their own movie. Who usually have their own movie. You know, until here, it's, now it's just like, you know, oh, here's this movie. Let's throw this Avenger in. Even though it's, like, not their movie. I don't know why they started doing that, but it's pretty interesting. Like, uh, like you know, Civil War, you have, like, of course, you know, might as well call it, you know, the Avengers 3. Yeah, I know. They literally have the entire Avengers. Yeah, except... It was a Captain America movie, and, like... Yeah, except for, you know, and then it also could have, like, gone on as, like, a, an Iron Man 4, you <laughs> know? Or, yeah, and I don't... It seemed to, like, kind of focus... That, that movie seemed to focus more heavily on... Captain America though, so I could see what yeah. with that. It was yeah. more like a Bucky Captain America relationship. That's true. And Iron Man too. And then Iron Man just happened to have his own side story. Which had a great uh introduction to Spider Man, which, you know, shouldn't stray away too much from I do think I fell in love with Tom Holland's Spider Man, like right in Civil War. So oh, yeah. Was, it was like I like the whole suit look, the clean yet very comic looking suit. Oh yeah, definitely. Just like, ah, it good. it took a me a little bit for you know, to get used to it. I was like, why, is, why do his eyes move like that? I kind of liked him. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, eh, I see what it's doing. Because the gave, other like, two... He motion to his eyes. Because that was part of it. There was a lot of time with, like, whenever you had uh, Andrew Garfield or um, Tobey Maguire's, their <laughs> eyes were the sharp, very static eyes. Yeah. Just... It's also, like, the same thing that they did with um, Deadpool. Yeah. Like, they gave him CG eyes. Yeah, which was interesting. That's where, like, everything started to kind of play out. You know, first with... Let's see, Civil War came out in 2016. Yeah, I almost, I thought it was 2015, but 2016. Um, so did Deadpool. Deadpool came out in 2016. And um, that's where, you know, I was starting to notice, like, oh, they're animating the eyes a little bit. It's because it's hard to get a capture emotion, like, with those masks on. Like, Spider-Man, right. he's got a mask that covers his entire face. It's hard to capture emotion, but using the eyes to make like the expressions like if he's like scared or something his eyes get wide or right yeah mad or trying to focus on something the eyes can squint yeah you know what I'm saying? It, it definitely like it kind of uncovers helps, him yeah. you know with, from the mask some personality with the mask on right 
Is this like the first real like MCU Avenger with a mask? I'm pretty sure besides like Iron Man, you know. I mean, you have a uh, Black Panther. Yeah, that is. They him. always take their masks off. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't really. It doesn't even really matter. And it's just like they're always like. Yeah, especially Spider Man. Especially Spider Man's always got the obsession with. Yeah, and his hair just fluking forward. I love doing that with my Spider Man like costume actually. I should have brought it, like they hung it up or I, something. Uh, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, that would be fun. It would be like uh the we, the first Spider Man. Yeah, it'd be like <laughs> the taxidermized stuffed it with uh like <laughs> with like cotton or something. That would have been hilarious. Um, but yeah, no this, and then of course you got the bad guy. Bad guy. No, we already talked about him, but we did. Uh, that's right. We kind of trailed off a little. I bit. do like. All right, so if we're going to go back to Vulture, I do like his whole story and, like, background of being, like, the crew that – and they, they just need to make money. Yeah. Because they all need jobs, and so they're like, you know, let's take the tech. And He was a relatable villain. Yeah. I, I, it was like he wasn't some bizarre dude. He was just a guy who needed a job, and so he's like, I'm just going to make these illegal weapons now. Yeah, exactly. So he started doing that. Which, and then, of course – bizarre, you know. Uh, like he went yes from construction no. worker to – to alien cre- tech like stealing all this stuff yeah that one dude he's like hey look i can build this you know, <laughs> and just, then he just like builds everything yeah it's literally yeah, it's eight like, years later they have a whole organization yeah which is that was, it's i like how it's a more grounded villain and more relatable mm-hmm. um and of course like you know i'm a big michael keaton fan yeah and, and like they got michael keaton to play him which was awesome you know who almost played him mm-hmm. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. Luke Skywalker. Almost you know, played. I don't know if I could see that one honestly. Yeah. Like Michael Keaton did a, like does a really good job. Dude, he did. He was a he did perfect. Like, Apparently, Mike Mark Hamill was like kind of in line. He's like, look, if uh, if Michael Keaton doesn't do it, I'm gonna do it. Kind of glad. Not like Mark Hamill's a fantastic. Oh, oh we love Mark. You know, we but love Mark. Like, after seeing Michael Keaton. Like Don the Vulture persona, was like I don't know if I could see Mark Hamill doing it because Michael Keaton yeah. just looks like a vulture. Exactly. Not looks like a vulture, but looks like he'd play the character Vulture. Exactly. I, which that's just crazy to me that Mark Hamill almost played, especially like around you know like that would be, that would have been like shortly after like Kingsman came out, and of course like he was in Kingsman. And it's like uh, like nothing against him, was- nothing against him, but he's not like. He doesn't have the physicality of, like, the vulture, you know, especially yeah. in the comics. Like, you know, Michael Keaton is n- almost, like, not skinny enough to be the vulture, you know? Oh, that's right. The vulture is really skinny. Yeah, he's, like, kind of creepy. Wait, doesn't he have cancer? I, I want to say. I think in the comics he has cancer. To be honest, I have never, since, especially since this is, like, our first MCU, like, you know, movie that we're reviewing. Never read any of the comics. Yeah, you know, the only comics I ever read was just like one of the Deadpool ones. Oh uh, yeah, where like Deadpool, I, Deadpool kills the MCU. I, I wanted to read that. It was nice. Funny. That's awesome. He just blows up the Avengers. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That sounds about right. He shoots Spider Man in the face. That sounds about right. To go along with our Spider Man talk, <laughs> he gets shot in the face. Shot in the face, <laughs> and then like uh, a bunch of other stuff between Spider Man and. Deadpool, Their I think. romance is really funny. I really, really hope they do something with that. That would be awesome if he's like, because we don't really know exactly like what universe Deadpool's in, right? He's in the Sony, but now Disney owns Sony. No, he was actually he's actually more like X Men. I know. So that's, Dead- Disney owns the names now. That's like they're planning on bringing mutants. But right. Before, like they couldn't use the name mutants because Sony had the rights to it. Wait, what did I say? I said that uh. X-Men. That, yeah, well, X-Men is actually like 20th Century Fox. Oh, that's what I meant. Not Sony. 20th Century Fox. They yeah. own it now. Yes, yeah, so they, they like do they own that. to all that. But they don't own Sony. They don't own Sony. They don't. Which, okay. yeah, they they're, they're, they keep fighting back and forth. I think it's all for like publicity. Like, ooh, maybe a Tom Holland movie won't come. Maybe it will. Because there was that whole thing like where like, you know, Tom Holland apparently had to go cry to the, you know, director of Sony or president of sony like look i really want to stay in the mcu stuff like that mm. so there was like uncharted no something? just because i'm thinking like sony and yeah like sony is making game. uncharted but uh i think it was just like they were like you know we're it's it was a lot of business stuff from you know 
like it was from the business side of things that just were making it very difficult right um for them to for sony and disney to get along at the time um but yeah no let's maybe try to get back um yeah just a little bit and you know kind of into a little rabbit hole but you know i, th I think now is like when we should definitely start talking about the movie itself um let's see so what i noticed last night um and especially when um like the vulture you know you, you're introduced to him he's you know he's it's like that music and he's like flying in and stuff like what i really notice is there's a lot of parallels between him and iron man you know i think so because so. like whenever he flew down and like he he just like shot down onto like the that platform and the mechanics come and take the stuff off of him i'm like oh it's like Iron Man, and he comes down and like he's creating like suits, and then of course like yeah, right after his suit is like pretty much plucked off of him, like Iron Man, like his he has his mask, his like helmet, and it like folds up almost like you know Iron Man, and like reveals his face almost like you know it reveals Tony Stark's. So I don't All know. Right, so you you see more parallels in the actual like gear and how he gets out gear, of it rather than like, yeah characteristics or something like that yeah exactly exactly okay. I thought there, you it's like, no 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 relate like a relationship between the two that you noticed and i was like oh. it's like yes and no like um i don't know just like they're they're just on different paths you know they're like almost like the same person just on different paths Interesting. and you know like of course like peter definitely could have you know so tony stark is like peter's like surrogate son you know but he literally if he like he and uh liz would have gone on which is like that was a crazy twist where you find that his crush liz is literally like her dad like i remember watching it first i was like oh i thought that was just, that was a smart writing choice right there that, that really just, was like, added the tension of, like it, and it just like it blew it blew my mind i was like okay so let's and then see. And those awkward teenage things, which I yeah, was which were spot on. They were very spot on. He's just like, and like his smile and like the way he was like eyeballing the dad. I guess you kind of do that already, but now he's like, okay, this is actually a guy who's been trying to kill me. Yeah. And stuff. Um, but yeah, like um, first I was like, okay, so I know they're like a little from different ethnic groups, you know, like. The vulture and Liz, like, did he kill, like, did he show up and like kill or like hold like Liz hostage and stuff? And then of course he's like, you must be Peter. Like, come on in. I was like, oh wait, something's up. What's going on? And like, I was, oh, you're confused as to why like, he was there. Yeah, I was like, what? Is he at the wrong house or something? <laughs> it's like, it must be Peter. Come on in. I was like, whoa, okay, S what's going on? And like it just kept getting more and more confusing. Like it was that was such an awesome scene, especially like watching it like, like the, had on no my idea. first time. That I think helped add the tension is because you knew who he was, but and, like, yeah. Peter knew who he was, but he didn't know who Peter was. And that was cool watching it because it's usually the opposite almost. Yeah. You know, most of the times like the bad guy knows who, and you're just like, oh. And they just start interrogating them, and you're just like, oh, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. But this time Peter was like, he was the one like trying to stop from being interrogated. Yeah and stuff which that was so cool uh, we'll get to that scene in a little bit i love that that scene um but yeah no i forget exactly what we we're you know talking about first you know i kind of want to like oh we should kind of go through um and then of course there's ned ned i didn't realize who exactly ned was ned Leeds is the character's name um i didn't realize who he was until i researched it recently like who's who's he in like the MCU universe or the MCU? I don't have to include universe. Um, but apparently, you know, of course, he's Hobgoblin, and like he's Is he really yeah. So you got this kid who you know, Peter's like friend. yeah, Peter's friend. Like who is this kid? He's Hobgoblin. Weird. Guys. Yeah, and so we'll have to see what happens like in the next one, maybe. Well, yeah, what's going on with that? Then? <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, okay, so he's not. I wonder if they'll do something with that in the next one. Yeah, he's he's not. You know, he's not Harry Osborn. He's. Because I know Hobgoblin is a whole different character than Green Goblin. Yeah, it's like he's a nastier looking. 
Yeah, he's Apple. pretty much what Harry Osborn became in the Amazing Spider-Man, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Or is, I thought it was, was just like another version of Green Goblin. That's what I figured, but then of course, like his dad was there, and so like oh, maybe he had the tech, obviously. So I don't know. I think I think that was also like Hobgoblin. Um, but yeah, no, that that was crazy discovery for me. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, huh? But no, I loved uh, his character. I love the relationship that Ned and Peter have. Mm -hmm. Like their whole friendship, so funny. They, it really they, is. They go very well together. And it was also realistic. Like last night, I was like, man, I remember like even first watching this, I was like. You know, I would ask, like, my best friend who just became, like, I found out of Spider-Man, finding out how he got these powers and stuff, I would definitely, like, ask him, like, yeah, dude, be, like, can the spider bite me, please? That's why that's why I enjoyed the little montage of questions that yeah. Peter was getting barraged by, uh, by Ned, and I, I thought that was so funny, because he's sitting there like, hey, how did you, like, did it bite you? Did it hurt? I let it bite me, unless it hurt, did it hurt? Like, it was just... Yeah. Can you lay eggs? Can you spit venom? <laughs> yeah. He was just asking all these like it's like, like spider related questions, and I was like, you know what, that that makes sense. I feel like if I would I ask, ask all the these, same thing, yeah. I would ask all these questions, you know, and figure out and like, I'll ask him, be your, like your guy in the chair. I want to have a part of this, like somehow. But now, like that was also a reflection on like how like realistic they made this movie feel with like actual teens, and then also the Legos. Oh yeah, I thought no, that, that that was funny. That thing too, especially especially that scene. I noticed it last night. Um where, like, he's like, you want to build the Lego Death Star? And, like, what? They're, like, nerding out. I'm like, this is exactly, like, how you and I would yeah. be if we were, like, I remember 15, 16. Like, building Legos. Or we'd always talk about the latest Lego sets, me and my friends back, I guess, not really high school, but more middle school. I mean, we still did it in high school, but it was always funny because my friend would get, like, this huge Lego set, and I'd be like, whoa! Yeah. And it was, I thought I, I was able to relate to that. And I was like, that's... That's very accurate. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Someone gets the, the nerdy guys get the Lego set. It's just like. Exactly. Exactly. Legos. No, that. And so that's that was where I noticed, like, man, they again, they nailed like, you know, the, the real the, high, the, school, the real high school. Exactly. They nailed high schoolers in this one, which is not easily done. Netflix does a great job at it. No, they don't. Exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> like. like like these normal school teenagers like high school teenagers that are like supermodels are like yeah exactly like, dude, like, you're thinking about that meme yeah yeah just oh, like yeah, yeah same yeah. here yeah. It's like here's a normal high school story with normal high schoolers and they're all like 30s yeah yeah but no um but no this this movie did really good um and then of course like you don't i can't remember how it actually how exactly it plays out where like um there's MJ. Like, what, what was her name at first? It's Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. That's right. Yeah, you just think she's like Michelle or something for a while. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, her name is Michelle. Michelle. In the movie, but she's like, all my friends call me MJ. MJ. Yeah, what do you think of Zendaya as... Her character in the movie kind of sucked. Yeah, it kind of did. Like, in this time, one. She was just kind of like a Debbie Downer and wouldn't really talk or do anything. She's just kind of like there, just flipping everybody off. And I was like... <laughs> yeah, and felt like they were trying to be too funny. And like, it felt like an old teenage character. Like, here's all how all teenagers are. Like, eh, hey. There's always like that one. It's like, yeah, yes and no. She just felt so moody. Yeah, and it was a like little her, too her moody. character didn't have any relevance in the movie. To, no. to the point where I was like, why is she like even here? Yeah, it's like, oh, Zendaya. Wow. That's so like, cool. Almost, like, what what is she time. doing in here? Now, Liz, uh, that girl, she's actually, I didn't realize this. She's in Black Klansman. Is she? Yeah. Like, let's see, Black Klansman came out in 2018. Yeah, 2018. That's so pretty fun. That's, that's a great movie. Um, but yeah, she's like the girlfriend. Yeah. I didn't recognize it. Yeah, exactly, which which I thought was so cool. Um but yeah, no, um but no they like as like I've been saying, they've they captured like a really genuine teenage feeling in this whole movie and like that it's just so great and which is exactly how Spider Man should be, mm -hmm. at least at first, and they failed I think the first two, you know, like versions of Spider Man with Toby Maguire. They're all much older. I think um, Tobey Maguire 
like those the, the John Raimi movies, they did a good job of capturing an older Spider Man. Yeah, like his his Spider Man felt really real. Mm-hmm. I think, but just not like the comic book that I was kind of looking for. Right, I, I still think in his own way that it was really good. One thing I heard uh, is that Tobey Maguire had a better Peter Parker. Yeah, I Andrew Garfield that. had a better Spider Man. Yes and no. Yeah, he was he was more he was a little more like Spider Man. I feel like, but then again, like I, I love Tobey Maguire's Spider Man. Um, but no, that was a really good point. Is that they both like you know had like their own like versions and they were both better in some places. I feel like Tom Holland just Tom leveled Holland, it out. Yeah, and I think Tom Holland did a really good job of playing a young Peter Parker who's just getting into like the the swing of things. Yeah, ah, that was good. Yeah, that was real good. Um, and then Tobey Maguire just did a like a veteran Spider Man who's now older and like working jobs and stuff like that. Yeah, he was more of like the one that you see in Into the Spider Verse, yeah. which we will definitely have to do eventually. We will definitely, because they got that the second one coming out. Oh, dude, soon. I'm ex- I'm trailer. excited with that. Me too. Yeah, I just watched the trailer. Um, but yeah, and the, the story of this is just it, it's really interesting. Um, it's it's a really good like if a teenager was a superhero and just kind of became a superhero. And like it's like every teenager's dream, and I think they hit it hit yeah. right on the head. And they did, and at the same time, they're like, "Yeah, it's great and all, but look, he's 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 getting his butt handed to him." You Which know? I think would make sense. Yeah, exactly. He's an inexperienced like teenager. Yeah, that too. You know, he's still kind of learning things, like you said, getting the swing of things. Um, but he, you know, he's he's got the best of everything, and then of course, like. There's that moment where uh, after Tony Stark takes his suit from him, he like, you know, he kind of it's kind of like that from uh, Spider-Man Two, the Sam Raimi one, where Peter loses his powers in that one, and then it seems like his life, his personal life, gets better, and so you can kind of see that in this one. Oh where, right, yeah, I didn't think about that. You know, there's that yeah. parallel too, where like you know, his, there, was, there was a lot of parallels. He loses his yeah. suit. And he finally, like, asks Liz to homecoming. Uh, you know, he's just learning how to actually have a good personal life, which I thought, you know, was great to throw in there. Um, but, yeah, no, that's – they did a really good job with, like, throwing a teenager into the – super, you know, like, a super suit. You're like, look, this is, this is how it is. This is how it would be, you know, if this was the case. Um, you know, just his eagerness, like always wanting to like show Iron Man, like, like his worth and like how, you know, he, he, he deserves to be an, an Avenger. And then of course, you know, you've got Iron Man's like, no, just hold up, hold up. Um, he's got that and just, he's excited. Just, it was very well played out. I thought so, but yeah, no, um, and of course, like, I'm glad they didn't do the whole uncle Ben backstory oh, yeah. i was i was getting old yeah they you know first we watched that first guy from sam Ray. i don't know the actor's name but i really like that one and he's of course martin sheen you watch him was there in the amazing spider-man was there one like yeah Andrew yeah it was, it was martin sheen martin sheen yeah uh who you know was his son was in a John, you know, he was in the Breakfast Club, John Hughes. That's funny. So there's that little. I don't know why my brain main like just randomly made that connection. Like ah, <laughs> it's not even really like that important. I do know that they are going to be taking on the Uncle Ben story and sort of like the beginning of Spider Man and the uh, animated show. Oh really? That's gonna be coming out on Disney Plus. Oh, I, I forgot they're yeah because isn't they're Tom doing, like the begin? I I think. I'm not sure who's playing it, but it's probably going to be like a Tom Holland kind of Spider-Man. I want to say he at least does the voice in, um, like, What If, the What If series, which I haven't seen yet, so I don't know. I haven't watched much of it either. But there's, uh, I just know that Tom Holland's doing the voices in something. It, but, might, be, it might be the Spider-Man animated show, because I know they're going to do the Uncle Ben story and uh, just kind of like the early days of Spider-Man hmm. using that, rather than putting it 
in the movies. Yeah, which I'm like I said, very glad they didn't do. I they made they, a little they nod, made, like, nods to it. Yeah, which it, I think I like that more. I did. Um, you know, it's like, look, you know, Aunt May's been through so much. And it's like, oh, so she's talking about Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. So there must, there definitely was an Uncle Ben. And just like, did, it's not like he just didn't exist. It's not like in your face, like Uncle Ben died. It's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> and then, like, of course, like, uh, you know, whenever he's like, hey, I'm going to homecoming. And she like, all right. They they open a closet and it's like, uh, Uncle Ben's clothes. Oh right. Yeah. Um, you know, so that was that was fun. And uh, like, speaking of Aunt May, what, what do you think about this version of Aunt May? You know, you had a much younger, much younger, very of an Aunt May. Like even as a kid, I always like had kind of like a a crush on Marissa Tomei. Really? Uh, especially from like my cousin Vinny, That's which funny. You, you haven't seen, right? I have not, but you should I'm, definitely. I know what you're talking about. You should definitely sit, watch it. Um, that's a great one. But um, yeah, I was like, man, really pretty. And then like I saw, whenever I watched Civil War in theaters, I was like, oh, look, this chick is really familiar. Like who who is this? And I went in back. I was like, whoa, that's that's her. That's Marissa Tomei. I was like, man, that was a very different version compared to Sally Field, you know, from like the the Amazing Spider-Man, right? Who, you know, they're you know much older and you know just not really this level of like, I guess, attractive and more of like an aunt. Like this is where she's like a little closer to where Peter's parents' ages would be. You know, maybe she would probably be younger than one of them. Yeah, but she was the most realistic, I think. Um, but yeah, I, was, uh, you know, I like Aunt May in this one. I like how everyone's her hitting. Was funny. I like how everyone's hitting on her. <laughs> you know, hey May, hope, I wonder. Hope you're wearing something skimpy. Yeah. <laughs> I love how uh, he says that one. I love that line. Um, but yeah, no. Um, you get some really good, like Spider-Man, kind of like action in this one, but it's not overdone. I think they're kind of saving it. They're kind of like, you know, here's like, you know, here's some, sw- you know, swinging and stuff and web shooting. But we're not going to show like some crazy like Spider-Man combat stuff just yet. Kind of save that for uh, Far From Home. Or they might just not be doing that at all. Right. Because there's not, it's more of him just kind of running and swinging around to his, you know, his enemies and stuff. He mostly just shoots his webs. Yeah, and then like whenever he's in a battle, he just kind of like uses his webs. Yeah, he just kind of uses his actual like hands. Exactly, which actually you know reminds me, uh, when I was doing the research, this is one where he never punches really anybody. Like you know that's a big Spider-Man thing where he just he kind of punches them and stuff. I I was just like thinking that maybe they were doing that for like, since he's a teenager, he might not have have the strength. Like obviously he's got strength but you mean like the but mental strength is being able to bring so. himself to punch someone yeah because most of the time like even when he was stopping the bike thief he just kind of like yeah just like launches him or when he's fighting the vulture he never hits him he just shoots his webs at him yeah but maybe he's maybe he's just like i'm gonna use my powers to my advantage like, exactly you know, they don't have web shooters so i'm just use them yeah that's a good point yeah, Actually, I guess they're not really his power. It's more like climbing. It's, yeah, so. climbing and then his strength is, um, but he could still utilize that. Um, but then, you know, he, uh, you know, there's that one scene where she's like, all right, instant kill. He's like, no, I'm not going to kill anybody. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, that's right. You know, we're not dealing with like a guy who, Wants you know, Captain him. America will hurl his shield at someone and it's like <laughs> stuff slices through him, of course. Or should, like or at least way, like bounce way off them. It bounce off. It bounces off of them, off of them but that probably stops his heart right there, you know. But it's, it's like that's right. Enough from that. Yeah, so we're not dealing with like a killer superhero right here. You know, this is actually like a kid who's still trying to get the swing of things. And you know, of course, you know, it's, it's just this is more of an insight on who this character is, who Tom Holland is as a Spider-Man. And, you know, we're still trying to get the feel of them for, like, this, you know, because they have a path for them in the MCU. Mm-hmm. And, of course, like, in, you know, next Avengers movies, 
um, you know, which I, I like his character in those. He obviously kind of upgrades a little bit. Um, yeah. one, yeah, one thing that wasn't really in it so much was his spidey senses. His spidey senses never really tingled That'd in this right. one. Yeah, there were some parts where he kind of like, you know, was like, whoa. And like, he was just quick to react, you know, no like, like, but there was never like a little, like, any, like something's about, like bad, bad, it's about to happen. Or they only like have that in, um, in Infinity War. Like whenever like he's you know on the bus and he's just kind of his resting, hair his hair is like stick Stand up, yeah. which apparently that was a practical thing. That was like where someone like he's uh, I saw something where someone like went and blew in his ear or something, and like made his hair stick up. Yeah, pretty interesting. But anyway, back to Spider Man Homecoming, that Infinity War. <laughs> We're definitely gonna be doing that one. Oh, I'm, for sure. I'm for excited. Sure. Can't leave out the Infinity. The Infinity Saga. Yep. Yeah, that's what it's called, right? The whole this whole th chapter of it. I'm pretty sure it's called the Infinity Saga. Mm -hmm. Pretty I thought sure. That was just Phase Three. Yeah, well, like from Phase One to Phase Three. Or is it Phase Four? Shoot, I know I'm lost. I thought I was a Marvel like fan, I, you know, MCU MCU fan. You know, I'm I'm not like a big reader of them, like I said earlier. But yeah, no. Um, but like in the showdown, it like. Back to my original point of no, like, him swinging around and, like, beating the crap out of, like, the vulture. He never, like, you know, like, got too aggressive and super violent. You know, he just was doing things that, like, he would kind of, like, get around being violent and stuff, which I really liked. But I do kind of feel, I do kind of feel like there was a little bit more, like, of him not being afraid to punch. But, you know. He just had, like, some extra depth. To his to character, his character like, there's a reason yeah. I think why he's not doing it. Right, because you know, with like um, Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield, they're all just like having these brawls with their villains. Yeah, especially like the first thing Andrew Garfield does is he goes like, "Hey, old man, like you shot an old man in Queens, just punches that one dude." Especially in the first one, so we didn't get that with this one. Um, but yeah, no, uh, that's. I kind of wish they added a little bit more of like him not being able to not being afraid maybe like having like a like an arc like kind of towards the end where it's like I I got to do what I got to do I got to punch this guy to knock him out or at least try you know maybe where he gets a little more aggressive Does he even do that in the later movies does he punch anybody I don't know I know oh I know like in in game like where he gets like uh there is this little shot of him, like, where you hear Karen, who uh, gets, she's, like, instant kill mode, and, like, he, it's the iron spider, and it's, like, starts stabbing all, like, mm -hmm. the little aliens, like, yeah. all Thanos' aliens. So that's where he, like, it's like, all right, we're going to skip the punching phase, go straight, straight into, to killing into yeah, <laughs> straight into, like, stabbing all these alien things, you know? Yeah, it's funny, though. Oh, that's cool. But, yeah, no, and then speaking of Karen, did you ever make the connection... And I probably told you about this a while ago, but so you have Paul Bettany who plays Jarvis, who becomes Vision. So Jarvis, you know, Paul Bettany's voice was an Iron Man suit. Mm -hmm. Paul Bettany is married to Jennifer Conley, who does the voice of Karen oh, in real funny. life. That's funny. I don't know if that's something they were actually like, like, hey, you know what would be cool if we got like that guy to. His, I feel like we got that, that guy's wife. That, that definitely did. It's like the voice of Jarvis is now the like Spider Man's. Yeah. Uh, the wife's. Yeah, Jarvis. the wife. Yeah, they're actually like married. That had in to real, be on purpose. Yeah, they're married in real life and stuff, and they got they got her to do Karen, which That's funny. I loved I Karen. I loved like that whole thing. You know, it was almost like you know, gave him a, something to talk, to, someone to talk yeah. to, like whenever like it would get probably get boring. You know, like ah, uh, don't really want to watch him like. Just go around, and we kind of want some like more dialogue that makes sense. I think I, I liked it because um, the last AI would be Jarvis, and you know, in all the Iron Man movies, or anytime you ever hear Iron Man talking, it's always to Jarvis in that voice. Yeah. And so I think like a new voice for Peter, and now getting to hear like a new AI was a little bit like a fresh thing. Right. Like it, I just kind of like I liked it. 
Yeah, no. Like, I didn't hear Jarvis's voice when Peter started talking. I heard caring. And I was like, oh, yeah. Because then, uh, let's see, yeah, it was in Age of Ultron where you can tell that, like, that Tony Stark had another voice because he used Jarvis. He put Jarvis into, like, a, uh, into a body, which became Vision. Mm-hmm. And now he had to get, like, a new voice, a new AI. You can tell, like, it was her name was Friday or something. And so that's she kind of became, but yeah, it was so that was nice. And then like, you know, like Karen becomes a character. You know, mm-hmm. I actually named my uh, Xbox hard drive after her, <laughs> after Karen. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, um, yeah, no, I really liked, really liked that. Um, so, but then, oh yeah, that's right. So, um, the the blonde chick. Like on on the uh, like the the TV and stuff. It's like, do you have a date for homecoming? Thanks. Wow. You know, like that girl. You know that who that is, right? I think that's uh like spider like uh Gwen? the silk. I don't think that's Gwen, but it's like the silk spider or something like that. It's not Spider Gwen, but uh that actress has been in like some movies before. Um, so like I've, I've seen her and so it's like, eh, she has a little bit of a reputation, so she must have like a little bit of a future in, in this universe, which is pretty interesting. Maybe so. yeah, I want to see like, let's see. Yeah. It's like Cindy moon or something. Like, I don't know where yeah, I can't even see it. Yeah. Cindy moon. I think it's the character's name, but I don't know the actresses. Um, but yeah, it's like her, her name is silk. Um, but yeah, like, what about that scene? We didn't really, like, talk a whole lot about it from whenever, um, Tony has to take the suit, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, just how well done that was, where, like, you know, like, we did mention where, like, it actually felt like he was a dad, like, disciplining his son. Like, no, like, you're not gonna, you know, almost like, uh... You're like, oh, like you're not gonna, you're not gonna get home at the time I told you to. I'm gonna take take your car keys, type thing. Like it you're felt being immature with the responsibility I've given you, and he's like, you clearly aren't ready. Yeah. To handle it, so he's like, so I'm not, I'm gonna take, take that back. responsibility away. You know, at least for now. Um, but like, I just I love that scene, where you know, and like, you know, he's just, just like begging, like, no, please look. I'm like nothing without the suit. You know, this is all I am. This is all I have. And of course, the, like that's the famous line, like if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. It's kind of like our um uh what do you call it? The with great power comes great responsibility quote, but kind of done in a whole different done way. Done in a very different way, you know, it's it's and that's definitely the theme that they were yeah, going for. He was like the Uncle Ben, like the replacement for Uncle Ben. Like he just trying Pretty to much was. the exception of Tony. And then, of course, you know, same fate happens, you know, in game. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, pretty much, like you know, he kind of holds him while he's dying and stuff again. Um, but no, uh, then of course that other scene that I like mentioned earlier that I really liked, where uh, the vulture kind of finds out and kind of realizes you could see all the you know cogs turning. Like I love Michael Keaton, like. He's a veteran actor, and of course, like, you know, it's just like, oh, now he's in the MCU. This is awesome. He was Batman. Now he's the Vulture. Um, now he's Batman again. What? Yeah, now he's Batman again. He's Batman again. But um, he, so I love, like, whenever he's like, oh, really? Yeah, I you love know, that whole You know little, Spider-Man? Yeah, I love the little, the sequence with him starting to, like, uh, put together that Peter Parker Spider-Man, and then also using traffic lights yeah and so it's it's kind like of his, as like whenever he finally like pieced it all together the lights were like red or green yeah or they were turning like red I think it, was, it was red when he was putting it together and then turned green wherever he like, kind of switched he, he he's like uh, and he, I, I thought that was a clever way of doing that just because it made him look more intimidating with like the glow on his face yeah like it was red and then it turns green like vultures green it really like, oh, oh that's cool i didn't even get that well, that's what it looked like because it was like the green of like it's the vulture has the really green eyes. Right. And so uh, that's, I was like, oh, that, that's dope. It's like the vulture green. That's awesome. I didn't even realize that. That's yeah. so cool. 
Yeah. Um, I thought it was just a clever way to use lighting to kind of like tell a mental story. That, and I am a big, head. I'm a big fan of like when they use like cool lighting like that and mm-hmm. just kind of scenery and stuff. Um, I'm a really big fan. But um, but yeah, no, that was that was just awesome. Uh, and I love the line. He's like, "You go to old pal Spider Man." Good old Spider Man. Thank thank goodness he was there. <laughs> Good old Spider Man. I love that line. That was one of my favorite lines, which I'll mention. I'll go over it like, like old some lines. Big tension being built up. Like any time that Michael Keaton and Spider Man were like, or I guess Peter Parker were right next to each other, and like from the moment he meets him and they get the to get the daughter and then they're in the car like the, i think the car sequence was just so intense oh yeah like you mean like what after he's like i'm gonna give him the dad talk well that but then also leading up to that with like the lights oh uh, yeah he's figuring out he's spider-man because it's sitting, you're Very, sitting there like, and just, you're like he's gonna find out he's gonna find out what's he gonna do like that kind of thing yeah and then just, he did such well. a good job with just his facial expressions and then like of course you know tom holland did a great job with being like Know, I'm, about, I'm about to be caught, I think. You like, know? I'm about to, about to die in this car. Yeah. It's like this. I know this is the bad guy, but I'm like trying to do everything. Like, what do I do? And then, of course, like, you know, the the part where he's like, I'm going to give him the dad talk. And she's like, don't let him intimidate you. I was like, uh, he, that was a good cover because that's exactly what like a dad would do. Yeah, the dad talk. And then like. It's like he, he had a good. Uh, good excuse. Good excuses for very being, like dad things to get him to it was very valid yeah very valid and then um of course you know like first thing he does is grabs a gun and just like kind of holds it He's like i thought that was a bit bizarre i'm not even gonna lie that he pulls a gun like in the front of a school of a high school with a bunch of kids outside he just pulls a gun out and just like holds it and i'm like it's no one noticing the fact that this grown man just pulled a gun out on like the threat in a high school or like no one's gonna know <laughs> Like that, just and of course, like you know, if he like he's like, oh, this guy's got a gun. I know. <laughs> it's like if he goes, he's got a gun. And the dude would just be arrested. The movie would be yeah. Over. It would just be like, oh, I'm not Spider Man. You know, he could have lied to him. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not <laughs> Spider Man. What are, are you? What, are, what you've been smoking, boy? <laughs> <laughs> and then I mean, I guess he could have played it as you know, he's giving him the dad talking, using the gun to be like just threatening. Yeah, yeah. just come off real intimidating. Yeah, no, that was that was a really well done scene, um, you know. And of course, like you can see, Peter thinking as he's going back into the dance, and it's just like you know, he's like, "What do what do I do now?" You know, it kind of does. That, that scene reminds me a lot of whenever I met my girlfriend's uh, dad. Yeah, because, same here. Uh, he he pulled the gun out. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there driving. He pulls up to the car. He pulls up to the window next to me. Like, I was in my car. And he comes up in the car next to me. And I just, like, look over. And he just pulls this like, gun out of his... I was like, oh, my God. And so, every time I saw that, I was like, eh, that's, like, the time. That oh, man. Her dad. Yeah. I was actually just talking to a guy. We were at work. And he was just... We were just telling stories. And he was telling me, like, how... Uh, he's like, yeah. You know, my daughter was going on a date or something like you know, to a dance he's like there was this kid I, I, I didn't i don't know how i felt about him and stuff and then he was like um he's like but I, you know i want my daughter to be able to do her own thing go have a good time be safe and then he was like but you know i had to do something he's so like shot the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's definitely the ending of this story no i'm just joking <laughs> but yeah he was he was like he's like yeah 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 so you know the kid came down at the same time. I just so happened to be cleaning my guns. And so like, I don't know what it is with dads and, you know, just and guns. And guns. Yeah, it's like, guns. like, it's like this will They're like, I'm going to shoot you. If you hurt my daughter, if I hurt my daughter. It's yeah. Like, it's like, okay. you're cool. All right. I guess. Whereas my girlfriend's dad, I don't, I don't That's think, okay. yeah, I don't, I don't think I have to be worried about that. I'm just, you know, just more of him like manhandling me. <laughs> <laughs> and I pull out my spidey senses and like, spidey senses. yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, stop! I'm not gonna punch you back. <laughs> but uh, but no, 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 he wouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, no, we we kind of went on to a little rabbit trail there, which is always a little fun. It wasn't too fun bad. Story, fun like little, st- yeah. Just, you know. I, I did not know that he yeah fun, fun, had a fun held a gun that. out at because like that's the same guy that like had a gun a shotgun pointed at me i was just like 
I don't like this. I mean, he's just got to think it, about it. Yeah, he's, he's got a little. He's got a little kink with guns. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Oh well, it's all right. You know, we're we're still alive. We're here. He won't do it again. Um, but yeah, one thing I just realized. So we're I'm I'm pretty much almost done with like you know, like the story and stuff. But uh, but one thing that I just you know it reminded me of was. Uh, apparently Spider so, uh, Tom Holland. Whenever you're saying Spider Man, sounded Southern. So like, no, you're from Brooklyn, you know, like where you're from Queens. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, no, so you gotta, you can't sound like that. So they had to dub it later on. Really? Yeah. So they had to dub it. So, so anytime he says Spider Man, it's a dub. Yeah, Spider Man. How I, I would? I mean, we're Southern. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spot. Oh, I can see it. Spider Sp- Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. I can see like an English guy like saying Spider Man. Spider Man. Spot. Spider Man. Spider Man. So, so then they they're like, no, no, no. We're we're gonna get through the shooting this. We're gonna go back. And I didn't realize it. So they have good editing. Yeah, they did a really good job. Yeah. Because like, I, I I would have never noticed that. Like, yeah. Spider Man. I don't know. We, we probably sound like the most southern, like, hick. I mean, I don't... I probably do. I don't really think we have very strong southern accents, which I thank God for, because yeah. I hate a southern accent. A, or at least an obnoxious one. Like the... Yeah. Like listening uh, to Rhett and Link, one. you know, at least Rhett and Link, like, I was like, ah, oh, that's a cool southern accent, actually. I, I'm talking about the obnoxious ones. That's like, like, hey, guys, how y'all doing? Like, <laughs> redneck. Redneck yeah. versions of it. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why, like, Tom Holland came out and... Like, like, it's about a man. I mean, it's probably, it's probably just, it's probably just trying to transfer from an English accent. Yeah, I mean, that's the part. I don't, I don't blame him at all. I wouldn't see that being like the easiest task on the planet. No, I don't blame him at all. That's got to be hard. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, oh, also, did you notice Tom Holland, like Spider Man, didn't get the girl? I did notice that. Like in all the other movies? No, I actually had that up here. Like, yeah, like, I did notice that. Toby Maguire got the girl. Andrew Garfield. I mean, she dies, but he gets she get he gets the girl. But Tom Holland doesn't get nothing. He no. kind of gets the girl for like a second when he gets to take her on a date, but then he dips. Yeah. And then she leaves, and it's like, oh. Fuck. Yeah, like this was like the probably the first MCU movie so far, where like besides maybe first Captain America. I mean, at the end, it's just like, oh, they kiss and like they're speeding down. I mean, he, he does get the girl. He does get the girl. He ends up, and then freezing. especially ultimately. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then in the end, yeah. And he like dies, and then, was but it's Panther, just frozen. Then, was there a girl in that one? Yeah, but that one did come after this one. This is like the first one where like, oh, like the protagonist did not get the girl, which I kind of like. Yeah, I think that, that was pretty darn realistic. Yeah, know? it actually was. And I was Really, I really appreciated it. Really appreciated it. See, that's where my southern accent comes out. <laughs> like, where I can't say appreciated. appreciated. And I said, I said the girl. That was just being fun. But yeah, that's all I have for, like, you know, the main part. But why don't we go into some categories? Bo shizzle. Bo shizzle. Um, personal pros. Um, I'd say mine. Uh, is the portrayal of Peter Parker in this one is just the best so far. And, you know, I mean, of course you got to see him in Civil War, but this is just the best one. Um, you know, just much more like an actual teenager. We talked about all this already, but, you know, um, the villain in this is just a normal dude, uh, opposite of Peter Parker's character. Because I did realize, thought about that too. He's almost like the opposite of Peter Parker too. I thought it was more... Of, Polar opposite of like Iron Man, you know, just kind of the same, but just different. But also like Peter Parker too, you know, just creating stuff with his with, with the way he has. Um, oh yeah, and then like Flash, the guy from Grand Budapest Hotel. <laughs> yeah, I like how he was like an actual bully and like someone you actually hate in this one, rather than I just a didn't jock. Find his character all that important. Yeah, it wasn't. It's like he was on the screen. Like a little bit, but anytime it's he's like, ah, oh, that's I flash. Was never like, I don't know. 
uh, his character just didn't really do much for me. Sort of like Zendaya's character. Yeah. Like, they were just kind of, like, there, but they didn't do much. Right, it was just kind of like, that. Uh, okay. It's like, if they weren't in the movie, I don't, th- it, I don't think it would have affected anything. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty but much. But you kind of need those characters. Yeah, especially for later on. Yeah. At least Zendaya's character. But Flash, you know, it's just like, Venus Parker! It's like, ah, yeah. Flash, you're funny. It's like, oh, Flash, you. Oh, Flash. Oh. Gosh darn you. You got me again. <laughs> <laughs> you stole Zendaya. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, Flash, you stole Zendaya from me. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> But yeah, what what about you? Do you have any like personal pros? Um, I mean, you kind of already said them. I really like really? this portrayal of Spider Man so far. It, it's my favorite, just for comic book accuracy and like his age and everything. And Tom Holland does a, a, oh, yeah. does a really good job. Does fantastic. And then, you know, for Vulture, I really like his backstory. Like yeah, how he got to where he is. It wasn't like some freak accident or anything. He just got out the job and needed money and i was like yeah, that kind of makes sense yeah, like, and then, he's just trying to provide for his family and that just yeah that made sense for me and then he just went a little too far yeah just went too far um so yeah that's pretty much all you have yeah because then there's personal cons i don't know why i said like cons. cons cons uh there wasn't enough spider-man fighting in the last showdown which uh like i know i mentioned earlier like he wasn't violent but there was also like i wanted to a little more of a showdown for some reason. I liked it. I liked what it did for the characters. I liked how it was like just a little bit different. But you know, there wasn't an. I didn't feel enough like him like whipping around at the beach of Long Island. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just kind of how I felt about that. Kind of like on what I was saying on the Leon the Leon the professional episode where like felt like i wish there was a little bit more of like a shootout between them two yeah there's yeah, something a yeah. little like that you like your endings being a little dramatic i do i guess <laughs> uh, i mean that's the ending that's what you get me it's left big with action, that big action ending yeah i mean i don't know i don't know why that's how i do it um another one is um i feel like like for well never mind you know you could finish your content oh no i'll just get last thing and then you know go ahead um was like i mentioned before the spidey senses I wanted a little bit more of this. Yeah, you didn't really get any spider sense in this one. Not in this one. What about you? What so do you got? What I was going to say about your um, ending thing mm-hmm. is I think the ending was more focused on Peter's growth rather than him like having his arc or having yeah. some like deciding to punch or whatever because you know in like the end, like they have their battle but in the ending when Tony Stark comes up to him and he's like, do you want to be an Avenger? He's like, no. He's like, I'm going to stick yeah. to the ground a little bit, you know, be the friendly neighbor. And it's like, it like shocks happy and tony because i think he was growing like more mature like showing his ability to actually handle the mantle of spider-man right yeah which i think is what more the movie was focusing on is his growth as a person right rather than like his his want to fight or punch or something like that i can't believe we didn't talk about like my favorite scene like whenever he's trapped oh right whenever he goes back like i can't what like we totally missed that totally did miss that man like what happened Uh, but no hold up we're gonna go we're gonna we're gonna leave the categories for a second we're gonna we're gonna go back um that was my rerun (laughs) (laughs) uh but no like that's i can't believe like that's my favorite scene that's just how i'm gonna introduce it that gave me some mad anxiety anxiety i'm not gonna lie me too. That's why I love it so much. Feeling stuck underneath that rubble, like or <sighs> imagining myself in that position, and he's like, "Help!" And I was like, Dude, "He's like, if I was in that situation, Dad. I'd be." I'd be like, yeah, he's just oh like, "Ned." He's actually calling for Ned, and he's he's like, "Mr. Stark, come help me!" And yeah. like, I was like, "Dang!" Like, especially when I first watched, it, I was like, I'm kind of tearing up because like, like, that would be me, like just calling for help. And then of course, there's like that little scene, which was a little interesting, a little almost a little cheesy and campy. Where he's like, I was seeing the, the you're seeing the, 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 you know, and there was like two, and it was like just kind of reflective and stuff. I was just kind of like, eh, it's, but then of course the voice heard like, well, if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have. It. And that's where he's like, cool, Spider Man. He like pushes up, and like did a really good job, you know. Like of course some people be like, ha, that sounds like weird. He's like, ah, ah. but like whenever he's like pushing up, but like. I first watched it, and then, like, even to this day, like, last night, I was just like, oh, I'm getting chills watching this, like. 
that just was watch his him. big like turnaround showing that he's yeah. Spider Man. He doesn't need the that suit. That was his arc. Thing. It was, yeah, that was his arc right there. That was he it. He doesn't need the suit to be Spider Man because he is Spider Man. That's what the, yeah. the mask reflection thing was. It's like just Peter Parker is Spider Man. You know, I just, man, I love that. I can't believe I missed that too. And of course, I do like the scene prior to that where, you know, there's the whole, uh, you know, speech, the whole monologue from Michael Keaton where, like, you and I, guys like us, you know, like, we're, we're no different from them. You know, he's just like telling Peter that, like, you know, like, you're, we're the same as Tony Stark, but we weren't born with silver spoons and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. Um, but I, I did like that. But yeah, no, that was, that is definitely my favorite scene whenever he's like trapped and he's pushing up. And he jumps out. This ain't freaking me out, man. Yeah, like you said, the anxiety just like takes over. Very it's like, well. whoa. Showing like a distressed teenager. He's like freaking out. It's like, Ooh, oh, yeah. Man, I, and that's that's what it was. Um, but yeah, and then let's go back to the the um, oh, categories. Yeah. Personal cons. Still mine. I wanted more spices, so, as he told. For my personal cons, really the biggest one was just the kind of pointless characters that they had like flash yeah. and mj like it was like i know they have to be there because you know it's a big part of peter's story but it was like really it's just it's like why are they even in here yeah like, they have no purpose like mj was just there being moody and then uh flash i really felt like just had zero interactions yeah with peter and i was like you're supposed to be like a bully he bullied him he does bully him but he never like but it's, it's never, it's never, he was always like intimidating. Like, like it's like, it's never, he doesn't look like he'd be intimidated. Like, I, I don't know. And the other ones, he kind of brings Peter to a point where it's like, it's like, um, like, hey, now's the time for me to take up for myself. Now's the time for me to clean up my act and actually yeah, stand up. Felt like nothing happened with it. Yeah, this one, he just kind of brushes them off the whole time. I felt like that's kind of what Flash's character, that's how he moved the story was for Peter Parker. I'm like, oh, wait, I've got to do my own thing. That's Maybe just so. yeah. It just it just felt like so pointless. Yeah. I just felt like there wasn't enough interaction, like conquering your bullies or something like that. They could have done like a little yeah. sub story with that. But that's just... where he punches someone. He goes up <laughs> Yeah, that's that's where that's where it comes in. Yeah. He punches flash. <laughs> but, that's where that comes in. Yeah. That, that was my biggest little pet peeve with the movie, it's just the some of the character like those characters just felt Yeah. Like they were in the movie but like served no benefit to the movie. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, next category is question need questions needing answers. I don't really have questions. Yeah, I mean, you know, just kind of like, oh, you know, the vulture and the uh, scorpion. Mm. Yeah, and that. I like that scene. Michael Keaton didn't give him up. I was like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's like he's one of the boys. One of the boys. (laughs) Or he's like, I'm gonna take him out. And he's like, if I knew who he was, he'd be dead. Yeah. I was like, ah. Yeah, so that, so that is the biggest yeah. question. Like, where is he now? Like, where, does, where is Michael he with Keaton him now? Michael is going to be reprising his role as uh, Vulture in the new movie Morbius. Oh, yeah, that's right. He is. They're going to have some... I'm not too sure what his, like, role is going to be in the movie. Like, what he's going to serve to, like, the story, but... They're within the same... It, yeah, they have some sort of interactions. And so I'm just... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited that he's going to be reprising the role right. again as a vulture. At least from what we could see in the, the trailer. From, um, yeah, he just pops up in the trailer for a second. He's like, let's keep in touch. Right. So yeah, they're going to have does. some kind of interaction. Yeah. So he's, he's like, I'm going to use you to kill Spider-Man. Maybe, maybe. Like, I know you got some stuff. I am excited for that movie, honestly. I think Jerry Leto is going to do a really oh, yeah. good job. He's going to kill it, dude. Yeah. He's going to kill like, it. The, the commercials look so good. I'm so excited. Um, favorite quotes? I think we all know like the main one. Yeah. If you're nothing without the suit and you shouldn't have it all. Um and then of course like I put down uh one that actually stuck out to me like last night. Like it really stuck out and like it was um whenever Peter's like, I wanted to be like you and then Tony's like, and I wanted you to be better. Seems like you really just like that scene the most. Like all the quotes. Probably do. Like yeah, that that's where all the quote. That's where all the quotes are. But then I think, like my absolute favorite, is a uh, good old Spider Man. 
actually one of my favorite quotes from that is a good quote. One of my favorite quote is with uh, Donald Glover. And he's and uh, Spider Man's like that's gonna uh, dissolve in two hours. He's like, no, no, come fix this. I got ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, that's funny. I, I do like that one. I was like, ah, yep, yeah, it's he's a real person. Funny. Like I like bread. Like, I got ice cream. I like, I like, criminal. I like where he's uh, he's like goodbye. This is criminal. Yeah, I, he's I like, like, you I deserve love, that. You're a criminal. I love uh, the way Tom Holland just does his dialogue in general. Tom Holland has a good like funny. Like Spider Man, yeah, he's like, he, brings, right. he brings the jokes and everything that like as Spider-Man's like a teenager, you know. Yeah. I know I keep saying that a lot, like a teenager. He does it like a teenager, but you know he, he actually does. But no, um, I, I do, I do just like all of his dialogue in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, you know, cinematography. Just you know, I didn't. I don't think the cinematography really stuck out. Or yeah. stood out. It just. It was good. It was yeah, good it was enough. good. There was, you know, it was. It was like a Marvel movie. I'm not gonna sit here and be like. Wow, there was like, no like man. outstanding shot that I was like, oh. like you're watching a Wes Anderson movie or something like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, it was, it was same thing, same thing. Um, the s- score and soundtrack. Ooh, love the score, actually. I do actually. I, I like... thought it was very Spider Man. It gave me like the PlayStation Four Spider Man game. Oh like, really? Vibes. Like I love the Spider Man music in that game. Like if you ever oh, heard yeah. it, listen to it. Yeah, I'm so good. I do like this one. I like that. I do like the Sam Raimi like mm-hmm. spider-man music a little better but this one's like yeah you know it's it stands out amongst the mcu um but yeah, yeah no, like the I, iconic I, I like it with the uh oh yeah the original the Spider-Man. marvel's spin on it i guess yeah exactly and then you know of course you know the soundtrack with uh all the, you know all the music they used i like how they use like the ramones and spoon yeah i enjoy that they use kind of like rock music because i listen to rock music so mm-hmm. i was like jamming out listening to the movie oh yeah it's like hey oh let's go and i was like living in the spot uh, i'm sitting there and enjoying creepy. myself well, I, I like i like uh i like that song uh story and rewrites or inserts anything you would add change about the story um going off of my con here I just give you know MJ or Flash a little bit more of a yeah. Just take them out. Purpose. Either take them out. Or Instead of an purpose. insert, it's an outsert. <laughs> Get out of here. Like just giving them like a little bit of like more yeah. impact on the story. Like either or a Peter, character. Yeah, more character. Like just make it maybe having like con like a, like a real conflict between Peter and Flash because I mean mm-hmm. it was kind of there just bullying or making fun of him, but there was like no like actual conflict that they because in like the in uh, Tobin Wilkar's movies, like Flash became <laughs> Venom. Yeah, was well, it? it wasn't Flash. It was it was actually uh, another guy. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I can see why you would think that, but it's all, it's, all, it's all it's all good. Him. He became Flash Gordon. Mm. No, he didn't. I was just joking. Never mind. <laughs> I was just joking. Psych. <laughs> Psych. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, like for me. Um, you know, uh, I know I, I'm, I know I said I'm glad about Uncle Ben and that whole backstory not being in there. But part of me wanted to see, like, what did Uncle Ben look like? Maybe a little like more a of an homage, like where he walks past or just kind of like maybe a little clip of Peter first moving in and like how he's kind of missing yeah. like a paternal yeah. figure. And that's why he turns to Tony. Maybe something a little bit like that. I don't know yeah, how I would. A little bit more of a homage. Like I know they did the clothes and him saying all the things that happened to Aunt May. But like maybe something a little more like, huh? Like a mission. I wonder what he would have looked like. You know. I mean, they're about to do that with the animated show, so I guess we'll right. find out soon. We'll find out. You know, we'll, we'll kind of get a look and, like, you know, maybe, maybe who... even in No Way Home, he's gonna maybe he'll pop up. Yeah, maybe like, like maybe like an aged universe. Jake Gyllenhaal. I know he's in knows Mysterio, but like an aged Jake Gyllenhaal with Aunt May. It's like ah, that, he looks like an Uncle Ben or Uncle Benny, or he'd be like some Italian mafia dude. Like his name was Benny, Benny. Which from uh my cousin Vinny, who Aunt May she's in, she's dating Joe Pesci. Oh, fine. So maybe Joe Pesci would be Uncle Ben, <laughs> Uncle Benny. <laughs> Oh, Benny. <laughs> that would be, That'd be awesome. Um, recasting. I really, I really don't have any. Yeah. Like I thought, everybody who played their role did a really good job. They did. Um, 
you know. Like Tom Holland fit as Spider-Man, Mike Keaton fit, like fit as Vulture. Yeah, and then of course can't do anything with Tony Stark yeah. or Happy because they already are awesome. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. I love the way he gets his suit. It makes the most sense that Tony Stark built his suit. Yeah. Because in Spider-Man, you know, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, they built their suits, but it's so, like, intricate. Yeah. It's like you have zero, like, sewing knowledge, and you just made that. Exactly. No, it's and like, like, how does that make, like, that doesn't make any sense to me. It was me. 3D printed by Tony Stark. And it's like Tony Stark made a super high techy suit. And so it's like it makes sense that his suit is like a high tech thing or this really intricate thing rather yeah. than him just like sitting there sewing it or doing coding. And yeah, like, he was doing sense. like silk screening. I'm like, that's not how it looks because I, I used to do that. And I'm like, that's not how silk screening turns out. Right. That's too much. I don't know. Maybe he could have, maybe he found out some way. But yeah, no, that I, that is a good point. I do like how this one was done. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no. Recasting nothing for me. Um, I, the two shocker guys, they were a little goofy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was like maybe it was funny that they were in it though. Like, cause yeah, the shocker is a, a villain. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of, one of his big villains, but he was just like, you know, the way they were, they were just like, like well, what? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Imagine me up there. I thought that was funny. He's like, I thought that was the anti gravity gun. <laughs> like, yeah, vaporized yeah. him. Yeah, exactly. Like, I thought that was the anti gravity gun. He's like, like, no, that's over there. He's like, like oh. here, no, you're the shocker. And that guy was like, you just, he did a better job. I, I feel like it was just one guy, and they really like went out with it. Like, we're not going to make you too crazy. Because I, I watched like the interview with like the first guy. Like, you know, he's like buzzed like to his scalp almost. And he's just got that big beard. He doesn't look anything like that. Like, oh, huh. like maybe if they just had him like be like more of a normal dude, not being like this big old tough guy, you know. You know, like I was just like, okay, <laughs> this dude's a little goofy and campy. But um, that's pretty much it. You know, if, if they just kind of changed, but then of course, you know, Zendaya's MJ, she's a little too much like Andrew Garfield's moody side of Spider Man. Mm -hmm. But that's it. So, I think that's it for the episode. Anything else like you want to add? I think we've got it. I think we're good. I mean, I've got to run to a wedding right now. Yeah. Or at least soon. So, you need to hit the ground running. Um, it may be at five, but I'm starting to think maybe it's at six. I'm hoping it's at six. I mean, it's 5.30 just yeah. about. So, even if it was at five, you would Well, there any cars outside? I can't see. I don't know. But anyway, I've got a wedding to go to, and we're not really sure what we're going to be doing next. We're going to figure it out. Um, we still got some work to do on some previous episodes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of catching up. But yeah, no, this was this was good. I liked, I liked doing this. This was a good movie to do. Good movie to start off with, like, doing our MCU yeah. journey, our path. On the MCU. I definitely think we should try like going back and try doing like. Oh yeah, yeah. We definitely need like we're eventually gonna like start maybe with like Iron Man and then we're just gonna kind of hammer them out. Um, maybe even like. Or would you want to do in like chronological order, or, like uh, storyline, like starting with Captain America? Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Like, like doing like a timeline. Yeah. So instead of doing like from release date. Yeah, doing like a timeline yeah. story. Like we can work our work our way through the movies. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. The timeline. I have an idea. Kind of I have an idea. How about this? We'll post on Instagram. We'll do a we'll Ooh, do a, a vote. Poll. Yeah. We'll do a poll. By the time we're like really coming on to like, okay, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna do chronological or a release date order? We'll 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 do a poll. We'll let y'all decide. Yeah. It. How about that? Our 30 subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, we're we're gonna Wait, grow. I don't know. Let's pull. It. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> let's pull it out right now. Uh, but no, yeah. So if you're on, we really appreciate you joining us. Um, you know, we're we're def definitely be back with more content, and we will be back. So thank you all for joining the Bowtie Movie Lounge. See y'all later.